Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Kovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of Allah for another opportunity to, to be at his feet. Still, I want to remind you the virus is still around, so do take good care of yourself, and may God richly bless you. Today, the Lord has given me a word for these last days, and I want you to pay very attention to every detail that will come out. I'm trusting him that he will grant me utterance to share the few things he has placed on my heart for these last days. And I believe it's going to be a great move, and you will be part. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter number 28 and then verse number 19. Matthew 28, 19. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Go ye therefore. And now when you come to Acts chapter number 1. Acts chapter number 1 verse number 4. Acts 1 4. And being assembled together with them. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the father. Who saith he ye have heard of me. Now listen. He said go ye. And the same time he said don't go yet. Wait. But is there not a cause? There is a reason. There is a reason. Because he gave them that command, that great commission first. And later he said, wait for the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. Because when they waited, he was already gone. So wait for the promise. Don't go yet, wait. Praise the Lord. What, did we, what was the reason? Yes, he had a reason. God's purpose and intent is that the ministry work will never be done by men alone. It's not by our great our ability or what we have or what we can do. Even though he had trained the apostles and had many disciples, but he still yet waiting on our cooperation. Hallelujah. So, we want to be examining that great partnership. The reason for go and wait is simply God has a plan. And his plan is that we come into that partnership with himself. That great partnership. That is why he said, wait. The Holy Spirit will lead them into all these great partnership. The Lord has made many promises. And now... We want to examine the fundamentals so that we can get it right. Okay? Let's get to John chapter number 20. John chapter 20. And now let's get to the... Before we get... Let's start from the verse 27. Thomas. We normally say doubting Thomas. But it, listen, he did something very important. Let's get to the verse 27. Then say he to Thomas... Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And now, and Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. They are two great where he declared, My Lord and my God. Why is he saying this? When we talk about lordship, he is saying, my lord. By the time you get to Luke chapter number 6, verse 46, look at what it means by lordship. Jesus said, why call ye me lord, lord, and do not the thing which I say? If you are going to call him lord, that means you are willing to do what he says. You get to the law court and you have the man, the judge, who is seated. And he's always dressed as my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. It means whatever you tell me in this, your court, I will obey. If I don't even agree with you, I have to be willing to obey and then go and make my appeal. 
Okay? So there's nothing like low Lord. No, 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 no. In English language, when you say it's always yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So when you address the judge, you say, yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. You may have other exemptions and you may have other views contrary to his, but you need to accept that. That fact. Okay? So we don't say, no, Lord. No. No. So we are willing. So lordship demands obedience. Lordship demands what? Obedience. So uh, Thomas said, my Lord, or I am willing, Lord, to obey you. And he said, my God, come on, come on. I am not only willing to obey you, but I am willing to worship you. Because when we say someone is a, a person is God, then we need to worship him. The reason why many denounce that God is not the creator of a universe is that they don't want to worship him. If you have said that he is God and he is the creator of our universe, it demands that you be devoted to him and worship him. So listen, when you call him God, a call for war, devotion and worship. These are the fundamental we need to get right. He is Lord, a call for obedience. When you call him Lord, it means you must obey. And when you say he is what? My God, then you need to be devoted to him. Because you cannot say God, God, and then will not worship him. If he is God, then he needs to be worshipped. So let's get the fundamental right. Let's get to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, and then let's take the verse number 17 and 18. Wherefore, come ye from among them, and be ye separate, say as the law, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Hmm. The Lord is saying, the scripture is telling us, God said, be ye separated. The thing that will keep you out of from the relationship of God is sin. S-I-N, sin. It will separate you from God. If you love me, you will do what? Keep my commandments. You see, so that is the foundation. When we say Jesus is your Lord, then it means keeping his commandment follows. But when we say God, it demands what? Worship and devotion. So when you walk as a believer and you come into this relationship, you place yourself in a unique position that God will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. I'm laying the foundation so that you can get the truth as we move on. Now, let's get to Psalm number 103, Psalm 103, and then let's take the verse number 20. Well, let's start from 19, 19, and then we'll get to 20. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rule over all. I want you to understand the kingdom of God rule over all. He has prepared his throne on the, in heaven. And the kingdom, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Let's get to the 20. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandment, hearken unto the voice of his word. Come on, come on. Let's settle on this truth. One. Mm. The angels of the Lord excel in strength. It means they are stronger than men. Stronger than demons. They have power. These are ministry angels of God. They excel in strength and do his commandment. The word I wanted to emphasize and underline in your scripture is that what? The angels of the Lord are there to do his commandments. Okay? So if we love the Lord and we are doing the commandment of the Lord, we fall in line with God's purpose and plan. That means we line up with the angel. The angels are also there to do his commandment. And I am there to do his commandment. I call him Lord because I'm willing to obey him. And they call him Lord and they are willing to obey him. So we line up to do the work of God. We line up to do the thing that matter most to his heart. Hallelujah. I want this truth to sink deep into your heart. When we call him Lord. It is not just raising hand in, in church. 
and is willingness to obey what he says. It means I surrender to you, my Lord, and we are willing to obey what you say. And when we say that, and we mean what we say, and we believe it, then the angels also recognize that we believe. And now they are also at his there, and they will join us. Hallelujah. Now let's take the next scripture. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and then verse number 14. Hebrews 1, 14. You are in there? Yeah, let's get it. Hebrews 1, 14. And it say, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation? Listen. I want you to take note of the text there. It said, Are they not ministering spirit sent forth to minister for them who shall be war? Heirs of salvation. The angels of God are what? Ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us. It means they are sent forth to be with us in partnership that we may all do the will of God. But it will take those who are willing to obey the law, who will fall in line with the ministering angels of God. Because they come in there and they are the command of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? The angels of God do his command. That's the scripture. Okay? That is Psalm number 103 and then verse number 20. The angels of God do what? Do his command. They are at the command of the Lord. And we also are at the command of the Lord. It means we line up. We are ready to say, yes, Lord. We are ready to do what he says. We are ready to do what he said. So they will come in there. The Lord may choose to speak to us through his angel. Or he may speak to, the, to me, speak to us directly. Or he may speak to us to give us his word. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, And some other thing here in the scripture. He said he sent forth his word and healed them. Ah, uh, But you find a man speaking the words of the Lord. Uh -uh. Are you with me? The man will be speaking the words of the Lord. And when he speaks the word of the Lord, the ministering angels will be there to implement them. The words he is speaking is not his, but it's the inspired word of God. It's coming from the Lord. And so when you receive the word of the Lord and you declare it, the ministering angels of God who lines up to, to minister to the people, to implement them in their life. Bring the miracle, bring the healing, bring the salvation, bring the signs and wonders. All of them, they line up with us. Yes, they are ministering angels who are willing to do the will of God. They are with us. And we are also humble enough to stand at that place willing to do the will of God. It will never be by our ability Hallelujah. God may choose to use man and may not get angels involved, but he will be there. Hallelujah. He is a sovereign one. He chooses what to do, what he wants to do. Nobody directs him. Hallelujah. He can send forth his word to me and I receive the word and declare it and it will have impact on man's life. But I also was have to stand at a place where I am willing to obey him and then I'm willing to bow and worship him. Because he said, those who are willing to keep my commandment, they are those who love me. And those who love me will be love of my father. And we will manifest ourselves unto him. So the supernatural, it is not cut off from men. But they are men for those who love the Lord. And in their life, as they do the will of the law, the law will now begin to manifest himself unto them. Hallelujah. These are the last days. Brother, I am coming with this truth, trying to convey it to you, but my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will bring the meaning and interpretation to your heart. And when you grab these truths, be ready and be prepared to line up with the saints who are ready for these last days harvest. Brother, there's a coming and mighty revival. That's what I'm sure of. Hallelujah. You see, we are moving into the seasons of preparation. 
where the church is being energized by the spirit where we receive revelation and insight about the things of God and we become devoted to him and we place ourselves in a position where angels line up with us for ministry Kabunda Hatiaka it will change the dynamics it will change what we know it will change what we have been doing because now there is a supernatural God who wants to manifest himself. But he will take those who are devoted to him, those who love him, who want to obey his word, and who spend time with him in prayer. Hear me. The truth is this. The Lord is with us. If you get these truths as a foundation, then future studies will unveil to us God's purposes and plan and how to flow along with it. For if you believe these things being taught you, the angel said, there shall be a performance of those things which the, which the angel, the Lord told thee. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord wanted to deliver a message to Mary, but he chose to send an angel. Yes. But he can also speak to Mary. Hallelujah. But when Mary got into the house of Lisbeth, Lisbeth started prophesying. Why? The spirit of the Lord came upon her. Uh, what? He is a sovereign one. He reigns in the affairs of men. He chooses to do what he wants to do. And now, the truth is this. This is a time we come to this season. But I want you to see what I call the great partnership. Ah, uh, We have God, a Father, God, a Holy Spirit. Because he, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the Holy Spirit to you. So the Holy Spirit come in here to lead us into all truth. To guide us into the things he has prepared for us in these last days. And now he wants us to know that we are not alone. Brother, I am coming your way to let you know that you are not alone. They are those who do the command of the Lord. If you now be, make Jesus your Lord and become a doer of his word, you fall in line with the ministry angel. They will line up you for ministry. The thing God wants you to do, you will stand in there and you declare it and the angels will implement them. This is the team, powerful team. Hallelujah. Here is somebody. When you read the scriptures, Philip was in Samaria. God was using him mightily. Shaking that city. Miracle signs and wonders following. And now God says something. The angel was sent to Philip. What angel? Go and ask God. But God can speak indirectly. Go and ask God. He chose to send an angel. You see, we are in partnership. We are in a team. You see? So the Lord, the sovereign one, chooses to send who he wants. And that is his his passion and that is what he wants to do so he sent the angel to him at, at chapter 8 and verse number 20 he says get, get up hurry up get up to the highway of Gaza the Ethiopian Enoch is passing by so Philip got up and he ran to that, that road and he met the Ethiopian Enoch by the time he got there he saw this man in a chair passing by and the Holy Spirit said not an angel the Holy Ghost so all of them are involved. Oh, that is why I'm coming your way with that message that we are in great partnership. The Holy Spirit himself, angels involved, and the saints, and the brethren, all of them are available. And these last days, hallelujah. The angel said, look, the Holy Spirit said, go and join this child. Join this child. And now Philip get closer. And he asked this man, can you understand what you're reading? He said, come up. And he sat with him in the chariot. And they were riding in the chariot. He had opened Isaiah 53. And he expanded the scriptures to him and preached Christ to him. They got to a stage and the man said, look, this is water. What hinders me to be baptized? He said, do you believe in Jesus with all your heart? He said, yeah, I believe. They went into the water. Philip baptized him. By the time they came up, he was transported to Ezotos. How? I don't know. But I'm praying that these last days there shall be these supernatural manifestations of angels giving as a charter flight to places we need to be at the right time. He was in Ezotos for mighty revival. The Ethiopian Enoch was celebrated and he was going his way. Ah, hallelujah. This is a high calling of God in a ministry. But listen, 
we need to prepare and position ourselves. Not be so mad. My goodness. There are challenges in our time. We are so much involved in the things of this life. So many, many, many of them. That God found it difficult to use us as vessels of honor. But God now is calling his people. Let's see him as Lord and let's be devoted to him as our God. As we get closer to him in our devotion and in our prayers. And as we get closer to him, we position ourselves. Where are the hosts of heaven? However, we, we will now be privileged to walk in this partnership. Hallelujah. By the time you get to chapter 4 of Acts, chapter 5 of Acts, <laughs> the child went to prayer meeting in chapter 4. The Holy Spirit came upon them. The place was shaking. Chapter 5, they were preaching. And even the shadow of Peter, passing by, God people healed. Then you get them to the street. When Peter is walking by, they will be healed. So they lie up the sick and Peter will just walk by and they will be healed. And they went out there preaching. The high priest and crowd were angry because all the crowd were following them and the whole Jewish community were just shouting and yelling about Jesus and his power. And now they followed them. So they were envious and wanted to destroy them. They arrested and kept them in a prison. The Bible said the angel of the Lord came and released them. Let's get to our chapter number five. Uh, chapter 5 and let's get to the verse, verse number 20 let's start from the 18 to 20 very interesting passage uh, chapter number 5 chapter number 5 verse 18 to 20 very interesting and lay their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison 19 by the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said 20 go stand and speak the words in the temple to the people. <laughs> All the words of this life. Listen, God has committed the preaching of the gospel to man. That one, angels don't do it. Hallelujah. We have received a great commission. That is our privileged position. The angels will come and assist us and help us and partner us. That is why I call great partnership. But we have been pri privileged. Because what of why? Because we have been redeemed. We have tasted of this world and the sin. And the nature of sin. And we have come out for redemption. So our, sto our story is real. And we have tasted it so we know it. So when we testify of the salvation of Christ, it is real. Hallelujah. When we testify of our world, the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ is what? Real. That is why it is committed to men and not angels. They don't go to preach. In fact, when God wanted to save Colonus and Co., the gospel going to the Gentile, God decided, look, let me go to Colonus. He sent an angel. But the angel said, he says, speak to men that they will go to Joppa. And go. Why would the angel not preach? No, they are not commissioned to preach. Listen, that is why I'm coming your way today. Hear me. Angels are not commissioned to preach, but we are commissioned. That is why you cannot sit down. Because God can do it without us. But we have been privileged to come to this place that the things even God will not call angels to do are committed to us. Hallelujah. Why is that? Why that? The reason is this. Angels have not tested of the death and the resurrection of Christ. Angels have not repented of sin. But we have. We have tasted of the goodness of the law. We have tasted of his forgiveness. We have tasted of his salvation. We have tasted of his, of his grace and mercy. And we are born of God and we know it. So we are better test. We have better testimony than that of angel. That is why we have been commissioned. Christ was a preacher. He became man that he would test death for us. Hallelujah. And he rose again from the dead. Seated at the right hand of God. And we are now privileged to take that position. And to preach the Christ. So angels will be sent to command men to go and preach. Hallelujah. You see, this is a partnership. The ministry angels will come. They are sent for there. When we speak the words of God. He said, Pastor, listen. God will give us his word. And when we speak it, angels will implement them. 
Are you with me? Let's go to John chapter 3 and then let's take this verse. 34. Those who are son of God. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God gave him not a spirit by measure unto him. Listen. Christ received the spirit without measure. But we have received the Holy Spirit without measure. But those of us who we have been sent by God. We, God have called us to go out there to preach. We have a measure of a spirit upon us. Because by this measure, we have been brought into relationship with him. We have come into that fellowship. We have come into that partnership by the acts of the Holy Spirit working in us. He will lead, he will guide, he will teach by the spirit. But then we are privileged to do certain things which angels cannot do. And God himself will not do. Not that God cannot do it. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus Christ, the great redeemer. He was a preacher who preached the gospel to who? Saul of Tysus on the way of Damascus. The Lord himself preached to him, not angels. Are you with me? Why? Because Christ has tested death. He, he became man before. So I can be a witness of Christ. And his testimony is powerful in life. This is how God has set things in order. And I want you to understand that we are privileged. That is why we cannot fail God. We have all the partnership and all the assistance of heaven. And all the strength of the angels at our stake. As we begin to do the thing that matter most to God. God will manifest himself. And grace will be available. We are moving in these last days. When the spirit of the Lord is coming over his church. And we are being transformed into new people for exploit. These are the last days, brother. I call on you to position yourself. Get into devotion. Get into worship. Make Jesus your law. Lay hold on the things he wants you to do. Be committed to him. He is law and our God. When he is law and our God and we are devoted to him, then we are being to, willing to do his will. Then we will move into this fellowship. Hallelujah. Hear me. These are the days for exploits. The Bible said, those that know their God, they will be strong and do exploit. These are the days. I call on you, brother. Come closer. Come closer. Yield yourself to him. Be worshiping him and now be devoted to him. And pay the price. Be willing to pay any price that Christ will manifest himself. He said, if you will love me, you will obey my commandment. And my father will love you and will come to you and make our boat in you. May the Lord abode in you. May he dwell in you. May his presence be your portion. Overcome every challenge. May you be lifted above your ability. May you see the kingdom of God and his power and the glory of God to come. Hallelujah. I want to be praying with you. Hear me. It is time for exploit. It is time to overcome. It is time when God raising a standard of an army who will reign in this life. It is time Jesus will appear very soon. Hallelujah. Thank God for this time. Hear me. We now come with this message in your way. I want you to pay attention to the things spoken God has given us today. Meditate in it. Let it sink deep into your spirit and be translated and be transformed into a new person. May God's spirit be your portion. May the joy of the Lord be your song. Overcome every challenge. Overcome every enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. May God's grace and mercy reach upon you and his hand toward thee and God cause you to excel in every area of life. Understand this partnership, the great partnership. Yield yourself as a vessel of honor unto him and may he manifest his power and glory in your life. Overcome every challenge and let the name of the Lord be praised. We honor you, Father. We give you praise. I pray for all the brethren. Let the joy of the Lord stir their spirit unto higher heights May they see and understand the things that have been re revealed to us today. And may they lay hold on it, meditate in it for exploits. We position ourselves for exploits. We position ourselves and we are willing to go along with you. We honor your name, Jesus, and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and may his countenance shine over thee. Angels of God keep watch over thee. May your steps be ordered by the Lord and may God keep you in line. With all that he's doing in this last days. And may his name be glorified in your life. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen.
glory and in majesty. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russo Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you.